In this video, I'm going to go into more details on how we work with things in 3D. So right here I have a few objects, and these are the primitive objects that I got off this first list. So boxes, cylinders, cones, some basic shapes. Um, so that's one way to create objects. And I can take these objects, and if I move them so they overlapped, I could go and use these three, which are my Boolean objects. So union, so I can combine the two, subtract, can subtract one from the other, or I can find the intersection between the two objects. So if I go to subtract, subtract from that one, and this is what I want to subtract, now I can see what the cutout from where those two, where that cylinder was pulled away from that. And so I can see it kind of like this. If I click on it, I get one grip at the bottom. If what I'm doing the 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 primitives themselves, if I click on them, I've got a few grips for changing the height, changing the diameter, changing the position, changing how long it is that way. <clears throat> but nothing really much more than that. So if I go to layers here, to the layers panel, and I change my view from 2D wireframe to just this wireframe, which is 3D wireframe, you can see that not much changed. My UCS changed, so it's in a little bit more pronounced in 3D. But if I pick on, on an object now, now I get this little gizmo thing here. So I can actually tell it I want to move only on that axis or only on that axis. I could also go here and change that to rotate. So now I can rotate around this axis. And you can see my polar snap is still working. So I can, I can lock it in at 90 degree intervals or whatever I want. Um, you'd probably notice that there's a few other options here under the display style. So I have conceptual, I have shaded, I have realistic, which is going to take a bit longer because it's going to have to try and do a little bit of rendering. Um, I have just shades of gray. I have this kind of really weird, really weird sketchy one. I don't know why you'd do that. Um, unless maybe you're going to print it out and then color it in, make it look like you did by hand. There's X-ray where you can kind of s it's transparent. So there's a few different ways you can look at objects in 3D. Um, so you don't just have to look at it in the wireframe view because as objects get more complex, the wireframe view gets a little confusing and sometimes things don't look right. They kind of pop in and out. Um, you don't know which side is towards you. So that's why it's sometimes good to switch over to one of these other ones. Um, I like the shaded one pretty good. Um, anything the, the thing is though that as you switch to those it takes longer to, to work with it when you rotate your views or do anything because it's having to do extra rendering. So when I'm creating objects we just kind of, kind of went over the, the primitives. We can also extrude, revolve, loft, or sweep things. And to do any of these, we need to have a closed profile, so a closed polyline, as our basis of an object. So if I did a polyline, and just kind of do that, I'm going to close it. Now I can go to extrude, pick on it, and give it a height. So stay tuned for the next video for more information.